Valentina Shoshenko is our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. She's the UFC flyweight champion, and she'll be defending her belt on June 8th in Chicago, Illinois, against Jessica I. All right, goes. what do you have for Valentina Shoshenko? Valentina, let's talk a little bit about that matchup. That whole card is stacked. But that matchup in particular, when I look at your record and I go up and down and even the Muay Thai, you seem like you've seen a lot in your career, different styles, different matchups. With Jessica I, do you feel like she's bringing something to the table that you have not seen before in other fights? Uh, you know, you have to think about any opponent uh, and be prepared for any fight as it's like a unique fight that you will ever have. That's why um, I cannot say that uh, something very different that we was prepared uh, before I will face like in this uh, uh, in this fight. But I can say that uh, Jessica, she is a MMA fighter. She can fight stand up. She can fight uh, on the ground. So um, I'm preparing with my best. And this is, I think, uh, the biggest uh, like uh, secret of my preparation that for any fight I prepare as my best. You know, you're always very cool, calm, and collected uh, before fights, even during the fights. But I'm sure every now and again people say things that probably make you upset. Do you ever feel like you fight better when the opponent does those type of things? And, and what I'm alluding to is, I know she had made a, a, a remark about one of your Instagram posts, that you trying to speed it up or something like that. And it seemed like it, it did bother you. Do you. Does that add like act like fuel for you in the fight? Uh, you know, it uh, didn't bother me like in the how people are uh, trying to imagine that it go deep to your soul. It's like uh, bothering you too much. Like no, it uh, doesn't happen with me because to make it happen, it has to be too much for uh, happening. That uh, because I know how to control my emotions and uh, how uh, cool I have to be before the fight to concentrate more on my emotions only on one thing to like explosion during the fight and of course I uh, I felt that I have to tell something because if the person invented stupid things you have to respond it because even if not make any sense I this is my point of view yes and I just share with it uh, I share it with everyone Jessica recently moved to Las Vegas. Have you guys seen each other at the PI? And is there tension, or uh, do you just walk by each other? Or what's that like? Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, we cross our uh, ways, uh, like uh, on, in UCPI. But uh, for me, it's nothing. I even case, uh, can say hello to her. For me, it doesn't cost anything because. Um, like uh, in the octagon we have to fight but uh, like for now mm, I have to prepare for my fight and this is what I think about everything like all the day long to be um, like b best version of me for my fight and uh, for me like uh, I not spend too much energy on different things I just acc accumulate all on energy uh, inside me to show it in the right moment, in the right place, and in the right time. Um, let's go here. Uh, Max Holloway, Frank Edgar. Interesting in one, right? Yeah. Not really a huge number getter. I love Frankie. Frankie knows this. Love Frankie. I thought there's more deserving guys. I guess they're doing it because they need they need things to click for Max? to get the pay per view oh. numbers up. Um, Everyone yep. knows who Frankie is. If you give some of those other guys the top shot, who's homeboy from Australia who just beat Volkanovski? Volkanovski just definitely deserves it. But you know how many pay-per-views he would sell for them? Yeah. Not many. So I'm assuming this is the move. Yeah. I think Vol Volkanovski eats both those boys up, unfortunately. What else you got? Tyron Woodley's out of his fight with Robbie Lawler. I saw that. What happened? Well, so it's he already has issues with his hand. Mm. He says he just wants to get it fixed because the last fight he had, he had used tape to get, keep together. He's like, I have to just get this fixed. That's cool. This is moneymaker. Did he not know it before signing the bout? That's though? the thing. Or did he get hurt in the fight? I'm sure it's still not healed, so did he, he get probably hurt got during hurt the camp. Bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe just re-injured. Yeah, take your time with it. But uh, a punt, like a ton of people are coming out of the woodwork to Trying fight to him. him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a statement on his hand, but it's pretty much what we said. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the people that are coming after him right now. Darren Till. Wants to take him at 175. Ooh. 
as a catch weight at 175. So you can't throw your name in there and then say, oh, but let's do a catch weight. So he's out. Doesn't matter. What else you got? And with all the craziness, they're definitely going to give it to him. Who else? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jim. <laughs> and a sh crap ton. Brian Barberena. He's fun. That would be a very fun fight. That'd be a very fun fight. All right, keep going. Uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio. That makes more sense. Now you're talking. Leon, Leon Edwards. Edwards. That's a great fight. Bilal Muhammad. Good fight. 171. Uh, Elisio Capoeira. Okay. Don't know. Now it's getting a little hairy. Anthony Rocco Martin. Mike Perry. Mike Perry. And he says at not one, at, not at 175. He'll do it at 170. Mike Perry, Robbie Lawler. That's the fight. Yeah. Mike Perry versus Robbie Lawler is the motherfucking fight. That's it. Potsonibio would be fun um, till he fucked himself. He's like, oh, I'll do it, but 178. They're all, well, no, you're out, dude. Wow. That's the move. Give it to Mike Perry. Mike Perry, Robbie Lawler. Take my money. <laughs> when I mean, take my money, I mean. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, also, Darren Till did a, a statement recently. I think yesterday or the God, day before. I hope he's all right. He said he was. He said like something about weight classes. Like cutting weight is too hard. So he says maybe even heavyweight or light heavyweight, something like that. I don't know. It seems like he's a little lost right now. One eighty five, dude. Yeah. Rashad Evans. He's going to be inducted to the UFC Hall of Fame. My boy. We got to get him on a food truck, man. Rashad, I know you watch this show. Come on a food truck, dude. Let's figure it out. I should probably text him. Probably better than <laughs> shout him out on here. All right. Damn right he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Love for Rashad. What else? Yeah. Uh, this one was a surprise. So Neil Magny suddenly had to get out of his fight with Vincente Luke. And it turns out it's because he popped for dihyd dihydroxy LGD4. And what is that? I looked it up. It's like a SARM. You know, a lot of people popping for SARMs now. But I don't know. <laughs> Nothing surprising me. And listen, you know, man, a friend of mine, of his coach just called me to tell me about it. And listen, guys, I'm not a journalist. And they're like, yo, we'll tell you first. But friend, I don't care. I'm not a journalist. I'm not, I'm not going to tweet out, oh, get ready. Neil Magny's out of UFC Fight Night 152 against Vincent LeCou or whatever the fuck it is. I'm not that. I was like, I don't. All right, man. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I mean, and here's the other thing. You saw it so strict now. I don't know if he's really doing things or not. Mm. SARMs are a, a new way of doing shit, so I don't know. Sucks, man. Yeah. Sucks for him. So is it a matter of you saw it being so strict, or is Neil Magny doing some shit? I would no one Neil, no Can't military imagine. guy, um, fam. No, I, I don't see it. Here's the thing, though. Maybe professional sports. Okay. All right, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he did. I would highly, highly doubt it, though. D. Hoxby, LG43. He's going to be fine. All right. Let's do... Okay, so this is Anderson Silva. At first, he was talking about, like, he was questioning if he should come back or not. He doesn't know if it's past his time or whatever. Then later on... Really? He, and later on, he's like, no, I want to come back. Yeah. He wants to rematch Jared Cannon. Oh. How about on his knee? They're like, structural? Is it all right? He's like, yeah. It's fine. It's just a bruise. <laughs> no ligament damage. No fracture. He's no like, nothing. nope, no ligament. There's kind of bruise, but I didn't like him kicking my leg. Like, oh, all right. Well, it's a fight, dude. All right. No, he's, please stop fighting, Anderson. So that's another thing, too. Remember how he was, he was getting kicked and he was defending, but then the referee just broke it up. Right? Is the referee supposed to do that? I don't know. He goes, I talked to Dana and said the rematch, but Dana just talked. That there's no there's no rematch. No. What else you got? Aaron Pico is going to fight his next opponent at Bellator 222. It's against Adam Borix, who's undefeated. Mm -mm -mm. That's a tough fight for him, right? Young dude, 5'11". 25 years old. Huge and Do you say he's huge and hungry or he's huge and hungry? Huge and hungry. Hungry and hungry. Like gone, the, they, country. the country. They've taken shows like to turn the headline there. He's a monster. Yeah. I wonder why. So, what's your mm -hmm. theory, Dan? I think it's like a loser leaves town. Like, these are both prospects like, on the come up. Who are we going to invest yeah. in? 
Pigo, he's fucked up. You're knocked out. Are you the real deal? Here's a, here's another young, hungry, from hungry, real deal. Whoever loses, all right, man, we're going to put more into this guy. Wow, he seems like a real problem. Look at his goddamn. All right. That's interesting. They're just like, all right, well, Pico, it's kind of the same thing. Listen, you guys know I'm bald. I think Pico's the goddamn man. I think he is going to be great. I would have done this. I don't know why they're doing this for loser leaves down so a little early. Same thing with Sage Northcutt. These guys, like UFC was like, we're good, man. Like, it's going to take too long for us to get our money back on this kid. We're good. Go for one championship. And now UFC's going, told you. Um, but with Pico, I, I, I don't know. Just experience is priceless, man. Then you give him this other hungry fucking dude. I don't know. I'm nervous for both of them. When is the fight? 222. And it's the first time Pico's at a new gym, a new camp. He's at Jackson's now. Sometimes oh, it shit. doesn't work, man. Sometimes so, it doesn't work. June 14th. Right. New York City. All right. That's tough. This is also from one championship. So Christian Lee who is teammates and training partner with Shinya Oki, who was a champion. At one, he defeated Shinya Oki. He escaped this armbar that was pretty ridiculous. I saw the knockout. Check out this armbar. You know, Shinya's one of the best jiu-jitsu guys out there, too. Uh, he's one of the best submission artists mm -hmm. of all time. Oh, shit. Even the under the armpit. Oh, he's struggling, too. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't quit. Oh, my God. So survives that. Hey, real quick, how much better was this weekend's one championship than the UFC? <laughs> I mean, apples and oranges. Yeah. More drama, more stars, more action. That's pretty cool. They, they mix, mix it up like crazy, yeah. Yep. And this is the combo that took out Shinya. His striking is awful. That's where their teammate thing's going off like that on him a little bit. That I, I didn't like this fight. I was talking to Dan about this too. Like, dude. Was a teammate? Yeah, because as soon as he had the opportunity to get Shinya's belt, he's like, I'll take it. Yeah. And then they just. You only got for yourself. You wonder how close they are, though. Fighting to. I see them do show. a lot of posts together. I follow both of them. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, you do? You see them do a lot of posts? Yeah, they're like homies. Like, this well, is not anymore. Dude. What else you got? Um, let's. Oh, this guy was also on the UFC card. This guy's awesome. He just fought Danny Hot Sauce Roberts. And he knocked him out. What a great name. So this is him before the fight even started. He's breakdancing in the ring, right? Why how he gets comfortable, you know? <laughs> and this is him. Oh, All right. shit. Boom. And wow. He stopped himself, Good too. Good for him. Check this guy out before, too. Wow. Look at what this guy does. This is gets us some Korean guy, Road. Is he from Road FC? He did Road. He did some Brazilian fights, too. What, what ethnicity is he? He's got to be Brazilian. Oh, Piera? Look at this guy. <laughs> oh, I remember this guy. Yeah, right? We broke him down before. Damn, he's athletic, man. He just funny athletic stuff, too. He's comfortable, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then, I mean, the guy he's fighting is whatever. I know, but... that's true. But look at this stuff. It is not over yet. Watch this. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Well, this guy's so funny. Well, he's my favorite fighter. <laughs> Michael Pierras? Yeah, M Mitchell. 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 Pierre. Mitchell Pierre. Yeah, something like favorite that. Favorite fighter yeah. now. <laughs> he's so fun to watch. Let me this see the UFC one. one real quick. That was his debut. Against Hot Sauce Roberts. He's no he punk. Legit, yeah. yeah, Roberts is a tough character. Did I lose that thing? Uh, just fuck it, Jim. Yeah, I think I lost it. Yeah, it's all good. There it is. So knee, and then just that dude, and then he stopped. He pulled his punch, which I like too. Yeah, I love end. that guy. That was sick. Yeah. New favorite. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell, and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video, and tune in for more on MMA news outlet.